गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर रिपन मिस लोथ्रा आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट ट्रामा चेस्ट टुडे सो एज वी नो दैट चेस्ट इज ए कॉन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ थ्री वाइटल ऑर्गन्स ऑफ आवर बॉडी इंक्लूडिंग एयरवे लंग्स एंड द हार्ट ऑब्वियसली ट्रामा टू द चेस्ट इज ए कॉज ऑफ डेथ इन ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ सीवियर ट्रामा पेशेंट्स द मोस्ट कॉमन मैकेनिज्म फॉर ट्रामा चेस्ट इज मोटर व्हीकल कोलेजन and unrestrained driver is a cause of 50% of total chest injuries other causes are fall from height and penetrating chest injury because a bullet and stab injury of note the emergency department physician and the intensivist play an important role in the management of trauma chest and only a very small fraction of trauma chest patients may require surgery so we must identify the high risk mechanisms responsible for chest injury these includes the front seat occupancy an unrestrained driver a vehicle hit by an suv the vehicle running at a high speed of more than 60 miles per hour abrupt deceleration more than 25 miles per hour the presence of steering wheel deformity sign at the site a seat belt sign on the patient's examination or severe tenderness of chest if fall from height more than 20 feet or ejection from the vehicle the basic principles of atls apply to chest trauma patients and in the primary survey the injuries uh, like airway or obstruction airway obstruction or injury tension pneumothorax cardiac tamponade open pneumothorax and flail chest and massive hemothorax should be identified the secondary survey which includes the identification of injuries which are not immediately life threatening however which can lead to imp- morbidity and significant mortality in the long run should be identified of note some injuries in the chest trauma patient will require the management of breathing part of the abc of primary survey before the management of airway an example is a tension pneumothorax in which if you go for intubation before releasing the tension pneumothorax the patient might have severe hemodynamic instability and may collapse same is the case for cardiac tamponade the intubation and mechanical ventilation should be delayed till the management of cardiac tamponade is undertaken so for a hemodynamic unstable patient who has chest injury in the immediate phase the primary survey should be performed including airway breathing and circulation which includes e first examination and fluid resuscitation should be initiated urgently if time permits an ecg and a chest x-ray should be performed if on the initial examination a tension pneumothorax is identified or suspected an immediate needle or tube thoracotomy should be performed a needle thoracotomy thoracotomy is performed in the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line with a 14 gauge cannula which should be followed by a tube thoracotomy also a massive th- hemothorax can lead to hemodynamic instability and should be identified and a tube thoracotomy performed urgently if the initial survey is suggestive of pericardial effusion the most likely cause of hemodynamic instability is pericardial tamponade and patient should be prepared immediately for a thoracotomy if time doesn't permit the patient is very unstable a needle pericardial synthesis can be performed however even if after ruling out these two three pathologies and after correction of hypoxia and hypovolemia with fluid resuscitation the patient remains very unstable or is in peri arrest or cardiac arrest state he might need a 
ED thoracotomy. The reason is the conventional CPR which includes chest compression is unlikely to lead to is unlikely to uh, revive the patient unless the cause of cardiac arrest is corrected. So a word about ED thoracotomy. ED thoracotomy also known as resuscitative thoracotomy is performed in very special situations mostly by the ED physician in the emergency department. It is generally performed in a very unstable patient or a patient in cardiac arrest with penetrating or blunt chest injuries. The procedure includes a very fast disinfection and performance of a left lateral thoracotomy. The procedure should not take more than one minute. The major cardiac vessels and heart is exposed immediately and if you find the cardiac tamponade it is released by giving an incision on the pericardium if there is obvious cardiac rupture it can be sealed with sutures or pinching with fingers or insertion of a foley catheter and inflation of the bulb after this is done if the need arises an internal cardiac massage or internal defibrillation can be done which might lead to restoration of spontaneous circulation if there is no cardiac tamponade and the heart is normal on examination then the cause of cardiac arrest could be exsanguinating hemorrhage leading to severe hypovolemia. If the cause is bleeding from the thoracic vessels, it can also be taken care of during this thoracotomy. If there is no obvious bleeding in the thorax, the cause could be exsanguinating hemorrhage in the abdomen. For these cases, a aortic cross clamp can be applied or pinching of the aorta against the spine can be performed. If this leads to restoration of spontaneous circulation, the patient must be immediately shifted to the operation theatre for completion of the thoracotomy. This completion requires a trained cardiovascular thoracic surgeon and hence ED thoracotomy should only be performed in a centre where the equipment and expert surgeon for completion of thoracotomy is available. However, this procedure has generally not very good outcomes in most patients and it should be done in very selected patients. The contraindications are generally if there are no signs of life on initial examination, for example fixed dilated pupils or there has been significant time passed since the onset of arrest which is more than 10 to 15 minutes. The outcome is generally better in penetrating chest trauma patient as compared to blunt trauma patients. Also concomitant injuries incompatible with life are present like severe head injury. This procedure should not be performed. If on thoracotomy you find no cardiac activity and there is no obviously correctable feature like no pericardial tamponade, then the procedure should be stopped and patient should be declared dead. Only 1% patients in whom the ED thoracotomy is performed when they are in cardiac arrest survive neurologically intact. Now coming to hemodynamically stable patients. If there are signs of high risk mechanism suggestive of chest injury or initial examination suggests chest injury like severe tenderness to palpation or a seatbelt sign then we must go for a urgent e-fast examination x-ray and ecg and most of these patients should undergo a cect chest either directly or based on the findings of chest x-ray if there are no high risk mechanisms or no obvious injury on initial examination, the patient can be observed or discharged after observation depending upon the situation. A chest x-ray can be omitted through the, uh, in these patients 
if the nexus test criteria which is similar to the nexus spine criteria is met coming to the specific injuries the failed chest is defined as the fracture of more than three concomitant ribs at two or more points this leads to a mechanically dissociated segment of chest wall this causes paradoxical which moves paradoxical paradoxically on inspiration and expiration that it just moves inwards on inspiration and outwards on expiration this mechanical dissociation causes increased work of breathing and may contribute to respiratory failure in these patients sternal flare can be because of bilateral rib fractures which lead to sternum as a flail segment Flail chest is commonly associated with lung contusion, and the pain caused by the flail chest leads to poor bronchopulmonary toilet and development of pneumonia, which are all important contributing factors to respiratory failure in these patients. So the management, the main goal of management is providing adequate analgesia so that chest physiotherapy and insertion spirometry can be done. and proper bronchopulmonary toilet can be obtained the most important thing is to provide regional anesthesia either with an epidural uh, block or a paraspinal block of note some chest trauma patient may have concomitant spine injury or coagulopathy and in this patient epidural cannot be performed the paraspinal block remains the regional anesthesia of choice in these patients other modalities of regional anesthesia are intercostal nerve blocks or a pleural block if regional anesthesia is not effective then a patient controlled analgesia system with opioids can be tried around 56% of the patient with a flail chest will require invasive mechanical ventilation and this should not be delayed however we must uh, we must know that the institution of intubation and mechanical ventilation greatly increases the risk of pneumonia formation in these patients and a trial of niv is warranted in these patients around 1% of patients with frail chest will undergo surgical fixation of the ribs with studs screw or plates generally both ends of the ribs are fixed and it is only performed in ribs 3 to 10 because rib number 1 and 2 and 11 and 12 generally don't participate in the mechanism of breathing however the benefit of surgical fixation is controversial and there is significant comorbidity associated with the procedure a algorithm in uh, suggesting in whom we should go for surgical fixation is presented here for every frail chest patient at least 2 days of full analgesia physiotherapy should be tried if however despite these interventions patient and uh, develops respiratory failure and requires intubation and mechanical ventilation early surgery should be tried however there should be no contraindications like coagulopathy or the cause of respiratory failure should be flail chest not concomitant head injury or lung contusions early surgery and flail chest fixation should also Uh, be attempted in a patient who undergoes thoracotomy for other indications coming to pneumothorax or air in the pleural cavity which is very commonly seen after penetrating and blunt chest trauma it is mostly due to a rib fracture but can also be due to alveolus or pleb rupture the pneumothorax can be completely unsymptomatic or it can lead to severe hemodynamic instability as in tension pneumothorax other signs are hyperresonance pain pleuritic hypoxia and tracheal deviation to the contralateral side the diagnosis is made on chest x-ray 
e fast examination and the gold standard ct scan the first x-ray shows a thin pleural line periphery to which the lung markings are absent this is a classical finding on, on chest x-ray of a pneumothorax this pleural line however should be differentiated from the skin fold which is seen in the second x-ray the skin fold is generally thicker than the line of the pneumothorax and it can extend beyond the lung margins the pleural line should also be differentiated from the scapular edge as seen in the third x-ray other signs of pneumothorax on a chest x-ray are the deep sulcus sign seen in the first x-ray and the double diaphragm sign seen in this second x-ray some other signs which are rarely seen are uh, the thin hyperlucent line above the diaphragm which is seen in a subpulmonic pneumothorax the second x-ray shows a posterior medial pneumothorax more obvious on the ct scan the third x-ray shows a anterior medial pneumothorax and the fourth x-ray shows a pneumothorax localized to the major fissure e fast examination is a very good sensitive and specific examination for diagnosis of the pneumothorax which can be performed in minutes at the bedside for this we need a linear or curvilinear probe which is placed in the sagittal plane parallel to the sternum in the anterior part of the chest the normal findings are shown in this first video there are two black lines which are the shadows casted by the ribs and in between is a thin horizontal white line which is formed by the junction of the visceral and parietal pleural known as pleural line we can obviously see the sliding of the visceral over the parietal pleura in this image this sliding suggests that there is no pneumothorax this lung sliding if not very appreciable on the b mode ultrasonography you can use a power doppler or a color doppler which makes the lung sliding more conspicuous as seen in these two videos a m mode can also be used and a normal uh, a patient without pneumothorax a m mode will show the sign called as the c short sign because of the lung sliding and in the patient with a pneumothorax the sliding will be absent and the m mode will show a sign called as the stratosphere sign besides uh, 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 absence of lung sliding we should also find the lung point which is the junction of the normal lung with the lung with a pneumothorax in a single ultrasound image or acquisition the so, lung point is seen in this video with a color doppler in the, we can see on the left there is a lung with the pneumothorax on the right there is a normal lung it can also be appreciated in the m boat as seen in this image L the finding where the lung point is fine can lead us to quantify the pneumothorax if the lung point is identified anterior to the mid axillary line it suggests that the volume of pneumothorax is less than 10% of total pneumothorax and it is obviously small if it is at the mid axillary line the volume lies between 11 to 30% and if it is posterior to mid axillary line the volume is generally large and more than 30% management of pneumothorax depend upon whether it is symptomatic or asymptomatic in symptomatic patient especially in hemodynamically unstable patient the cause could be tension pneumothorax and a urgent needle or tube thoracostomy should be performed for all symptomatic patients a chest tube should be inserted to drain the pneumothorax the management is more complex in an asymptomatic patient with small pneumothorax for all pneumothorax which are visible on x-ray 
the ATLS guidelines recommend the insertion of a chest tube. However, some centers follow uh, the insertion of chest tube only if the width of the pneumothorax is more than 2.5 cm on an X-ray or if the patient is to undergo air travel which can increase the pneumothorax or mechanical ventilation. For a patient with occult pneumothorax which is defined as a pneumothorax which is not seen on a chest x-ray but is seen on a CT scan as seen in these images, a 35 mm rule can be followed that is if the maximum width on CT scan or is more than 35 mm then it should be drained otherwise it can be managed conservatively. The drains used for uh, the management of pneumothorax are generally a wide bore chest tube which is defined as a width of more than 14 French or a pectal catheter which are generally of less than 14 French size. For most pneumothoraxes which occur in a patient of trauma like tension pneumothorax or pneumothorax with concomitant hemothorax or if there is a risk of bronchopulmonary fistula, a wide more chest tube, more than 24 French should be used. However, for a small pneumothorax which is asymptomatic, a 8 to 14 French pictal catheter can be used. The use of very wide bore chest tubes like more than 28 French do not add any added advantage and can increase the pain and complication and should be avoided. A very special case is an open pneumothorax which is caused because of stab injuries to the chest wall. Open pneumothorax can quickly convert into a tension physiology and cause hemodynamically unstable patient if the volume if the diameter of the stab wound is more than two thirds of the volume of the uh, diameter of the trachea. Such patients should be immediately treated with an occlusive dressing taped on three sides. The air can escape from the dressing but cannot enter the wound uh, through this dressing. This should be followed by placement of a chest tube away from the site of the stab wound. Coming to hemothorax or blood in the pleural cavity. It is seen in one third of the chest injury patients. The most common cause is the injury to the intercostal vessel. However, it can be because of lung parenchymal injury, internal memory artery injury, or great vessel injuries. It can be diagnosed on X-ray as a C-shaped opacity. It can be diagnosed on E-fast examination in the posterior lateral recess of the chest or the plaps point as a hypoechoic uh, hypo collection. In the initial time in the ini initial time after injury the blood is liquid and it cannot be differentiated from other pleural effusions. However as the time passes in a few hours the blood tends to settle down and it develops a sign called as a hematocrit sign that is the increase in echogenicity from the anterior to the posterior part of the collection. Other signs which are seen on ultrasound of the chest for detection of pleural effusion of hemothorax are the sinusoid sign seen on M mode and the quiet sign seen with a linear probe. The management of hemothorax depends upon the upon its volume and whether it can it is it can be seen on a chest x-ray or not. So if the volume is less than 300 ml, the, it won't be obvious on a chest x-ray and on a CT scan, it will, the maximum weight will be less than 1.5 cm. These patients can be conservatively managed and or may require a needle aspiration. For larger hemothoraxes that is more than 300 ml or which are visible on a chest x-ray, a tube thoracostomy with a wide bore tube of 24 to 28 French should be done. If the initial output is more than 1500 ml 
or subsequent output is more than 300 ml per hour this suggests a massive homothorax and this patient should undergo urgent thoracotomy after initial resuscitation a retained hemothorax is defined as more than 300 ml of residual blood after 72 hours of tube thoracotomy this x-ray and ecg shows a retained hemothorax which is not draining despite the presence of a chest tube the retained hemothorax ha has its complications like empyema trap lung or fibrothorax the treatment generally involves vats but may be managed in an unstable patient with a second tube or fibrinolytic coming to pulmonary contusions which are most commonly identified lung injury in blunt chest traumas children and young adults are more susceptible because of more pliable rib cage the signs and symptoms include minor chest discomfort to obvious respiratory failure requiring intubation and mechanical ventilation hemoptysis is commonly seen in chest contusions and sometimes it can be very troubling the imaging includes chest x-ray or ct scan of note in the early period the imaging can be completely normal as the lung contusions tends to evolve over 24 to 48 hours after injury and generally disappear after a week of injury in case the opacity does not disappear this may suggest the development of ARDS pneumonia or a retained hemothorax and the lung contusions can be differentiated from pneumonia as they are generally peripheral and follow a non lobal distribution tracheobronchial injury are mostly seen within 80% Uh, are mostly seen within 2.5 cm of the carina in blunt chest trauma the most common site in penetrating chest trauma is the cervical trachea also the diagnosis is generally obvious in injury to cervical trachea in a penetrating chest uh, penetrating trauma patient there will be a air leak from the wound and this leak generally Uh, stops after the intubation and inflation of the endotracheal tube cuff however in blunt chest trauma and in injuries to the mainstem bronchi the diagnosis is not so obvious the most common findings are the persistent of air leaks through the ictd a non resolving pneumothorax severe emphysema hemoptysis or a hammond's crunch which is the a uh, crunching sound or present on the auscultation of the heart in about 25% of patients there are no signs and symptoms of tracheobronchial injury however these patients may present la late after days to months with persistent atelectasis mostly because of bronchial stenosis from chest x-ray findings on tracheobronchial injury patients are in this first x-ray there is a large pneumothorax which was for which a ictd was inserted and a suction as flight despite that the pneumothorax did not resolve later on on bronchoscopy a right mainstem bronchial injury was identified the second x-ray shows what is obvious what is called a fallen lung sign generally in a pneumothorax the lung tends to collapse near the hilum however if there is a mainstem bronchial injury or transaction the lung tends to fall down towards the diaphragm away from the hilum this third x-ray shows a left upper lobe infiltrate which is because of bleeding from the left upper lobe bronchus bronchial injury And sometimes ct can identify a tracheobronchial injury as air adjacent to the trachea or mainstem bronchi the second ct shows a increased distance between carina and left upper lobe bronchi and was later identified as a left upper lobe bronchial injury 
मैनेजमेंट ऑफ ट्रक्योर ब्रोकन इंजरी इज जनरली सर्जिकल और ए ब्रोंकोस्कोपिक स्टेंटिंग इसोफेजियल इंजरीज आर रेयरली सीन दे आर मोस्टली बिकॉज ऑफ पेनीटेटिंग इंजरी हाउवर कैन बी बिकॉज ऑफ ब्लंट इंजरी एज वेल ए सी टी स्कैन माइट शो सम साइंस ऑफ इसोफेजियल इंजरी लाइक एयर एडजेंट टू द इसोफेगस एज इन दिस सिटी देर इज एयर एंड द इसोफेगस इज सीन एज ए ब्राइट स्पॉट बिकॉज ऑफ द रॉयल स्ट्यू द डायग्नोसिस इज जनरली कन्फर्म्ड ऑन इसोफेगोस्कोपी और अपर जी आई एंडोस्कोपी एंड द मैनेजमेंट इज ऑपरेटिव एंड एंटीबायोटिक्स ब्लंट एयोटिक इंजरी इज द सेकेंड कॉज ऑफ डेथ आफ्टर ट्रोमेटिक पेन इंजरी इन पेशेंट ऑफ ट्रोमा हाउ एवर वी सी दिस रेयरली बिकॉज सेवेंटी टू एट्टी परसेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट डाई बिफोर रीचिंग द हॉस्पिटल हाई स्पीड मोटर व्हीकल कोलिजन इज द नंबर वन कॉज ऑफ ब्लंट एयोटिक इंजरी द अदर कॉजेज आर फॉल्स फ्रॉम हाइट a presence of steering wheel deformity at the site is correlated with the presence of blunt aortic injury the most common site of blunt aortic injury is the isthmus which is a area in between the arc of aorta and the descending aorta just distal to the origin of the left subclavian artery the mechanisms which lead to blunt aortic injury are ऑशियस पिंच थेरी एंड द वॉटर हेमर इफेक्ट द ऑशियस पिंच थेरी स्टेट्स दैट द ब्लंट टेस्ट ट्रोमा कॉजेज द पिंचिंग ऑफ द एयोटा बिटवीन द स्टर्नम एंड द स्पाइन लीडिंग टू इंजरी एंड द वॉटर वॉटर हेमर इफेक्ट स्टेट्स दैट द सडन इंक्रीज इन द डिसेंडिंग एयोटा बिकॉज ऑफ एबडोमिनल ट्रोमा वी लीड टू ए इंक्रीज इन प्रेशर एट द साइट ऑफ द इस्तेमस एंड लीड्स टू इट स्ट्रक्चर the signs and symptoms are generally non specific except for femoral pulse deficit however it is uh, seen in only a minor fraction of patients x ray can show important signs which leads to suspicion of blunt aortic injury and these patients should undergo a ct contrast of the chest and these signs are a wide medius you know more than 8 cm in supine patient and more than 6 cm in a patient standing other signs are obscured aortic knob left apical cap left hemothorax and rightward displacement of the trachea a downward displacement of the left major uh, left mainstem bronchi MDCT with 3D reconstruction remains the gold standard in diagnosis of blunt or blunt aortic injury and all hemodynamically stable patient in which this injury is suspected based on the mechanism of injury examination or chest x-ray finding should undergo a MDCT with 3D reconstruction however if a patient is too unstable a TE can help in diagnosis blunt aortic injury a trans esophageal echogram can uh, image the aorta up to the isthmus and can detect intimal tears of note a transthoracic transthoracic echocardiography has no role in diagnosis of blunt aortic injury the angiography which was uh, the most uh, the gold standard test in the past is rarely performed nowadays for the diagnosis the blunt aortic injury should be differentiated uh, into stable and unstable based on the findings of the imaging and clinical examination the grade 1 a uh, uh, grade 1 injury uh, includes only intimal tear grade 2 injury includes intramural hematoma grade 3 injury includes pseudo aneurysm formation and grade 4 injury means rupture of the aorta other signs which suggest unstable injury include the presence of active extra extravasation of the contrast on ct a large hematoma around the aorta or a large left hemothorax and the management of blunt aortic injury can be either stenting endovascularly or 
the repair of aorta surgically this will the choice uh, will depend upon whether the patient is hemodynamically stable or unstable in a hemodynamically stable patient with low grade injury the management could be conservative but uh, with the institution of anti impulse therapy the anti impulse therapy include maintaining the heart rate less than 100 and blood pressure less than 100 systolic the most commonly used drug for this purpose is an infusion of beta blocker esmolol other drugs which can be used include snp for grade 2 to 4 injury generally required surgical or stenting repair blunt cardiac injury is a constitution of various pathologies including cardiac rupture vascular disruption arrhythmias cardiac contusion or coronary thrombosis they commonly present as unexplained shock an ECG suggestive of myocardial infarction, arrhythmias, or unexplained pulmonary edema. For a symptomatic patient, a ECG, cardiac enzymes, and a transthoracic ketocardiography should be performed urgently. For a asymptomatic patient in which there is a substitution of blunt cardiac injury based on the mechanism or history. A negative ECG and negative troponins generally rule out blunt cardiac injury. Pericardial tamponade is an important cause of death after both penetrating and blunt chest trauma. Beck's triad, which is hypotension, distended neck pains, and muffled heart sound, is not very obvious in patients of pericardial tamponade after trauma this may be because of hypovolemia due to concomitant injuries which will not uh, which will obscure the finding of distended neck pains and the muffled heart sound might not be appreciated in a busy emergency department other signs are kusumol sign or a patient may present in pulseless electrical activity the diagnosis is generally obvious on E-first examination which is a part of primary survey. Management generally requires uh, thoracotomy as the needle pericardial synthesis generally fails to drain the blood present in the pericardium. So to conclude, chest trauma is a modern major health problem with high mortality even in major trauma centers and is commonly associated with simultaneous multiple organ injury. Knowledge of epidemiology, diagnosis and initial management of chest trauma can reduce morbidity and mortality. Management is multidisciplinary and continuous through emergency department, operative room and ICU. Thank you.